The Middletown Bridges, the projects for them came out as a result that they were really getting deteriorated and they need to be replaced. And the owner realized the bridge came to its the end of the flight span. The bridges actually were owned by Amtrak but serviced two railroads, Amtrak and Norfolk Southern. They both needed to be coordinated. The Middletown streets that go under these bridges connect the two halves of the town. Middletown's fire department and police station is on one side of the town, so much coordination needed to be done. And just keeping the residents of Middletown informed as to when the streets would be closed or open is pretty essential. We have a very short, shortest duration as you can when the railroad's out of service because, you know, it, it, especially with passenger rail, it's, uh, you want to minimize that rail outage. So you're minimizing the inconvenience to our passengers. Every element needs to be very practical so the contractor can assemble things and move it in as quick uh, as possible. Everything has to work perfectly in a very short period of time. How are you going to put in order elements to assemble and still maintain the traffic. That is the greatest challenge of these small bridges. The idea came up and was uh, worked out with Majeski and Masters as to how we could do this work simultaneously to minimize the downtime. And basically they came up with a sort of unconventional way. We had proposed a solution to the project which replace the bridge within the time frame allowed using self-propelled modular transporters. They're pretty incredible machines that can do a lot of things. You just, it requires a lot of planning and a lot of forethought to get everything to work right. The fact that we're fabricating the bridges off-site and rolling them in, if we, if we had done it the way it was planned, it would probably been nine months of continuous track outages versus one weekend. Amtrak and Majeski and Kiwit work very well together. If you can't get the designer and the contractor and the owner to work together, it's not going to be successful. We would throw an idea at them and they would respond to it. Everything wasn't so cut and dry and by the book, you know, when, like I said, when you're doing a, a fast-paced project like this, things aren't always going to work out like you need them to and uh, without an engineer who's willing to look outside the box, you uh, you could really end up getting yourself caught behind schedule and, and not, not reaching your goal of getting the bridge done on time. Kiewit had proposed a little bit different something in the, in the estimate than Majeski showed in the plans. We had kind of the same idea and Majeski's acceptance of that and uh, willing to work through the details with us on what Amtrak really wants. That was a big key to the job. We thought that it's a good idea and then maybe in a future project we might apply it again. For That's how you learn. That's what experience means. You learn from your previous projects and you apply it in the future. Majesty Masters has a very good reputation. Um, a long-standing firm. Amtrak's utilized them for other projects in the past. They know our operations. They work well with our engineering group in Philadelphia. We have a good rapport with them. They're a flexible consultant. They bring in innovative ideas and, and solutions to uh, the various projects and, and problems that we have on, on, on the railroad. Clients come to us for our technical expertise and for our ability to deliver a project on time and under budget. Probably the best measure of that for me is if we're invited back to do another project by the same client. This bridge has been here for a hundred years. Um, whole generations of people will, will come and go in this town and never see something like what uh, the people saw here. The building of the bridge, it always, it's always a good thing. You don't take back civilization or community by building a bridge, you take it forward.